We're big fans of ASUS hardware here at eTechnics, as it's often some of the best enthusiast hardware on the market. While the flagship ROG motherboards are very sought after, they straight up murder your wallet with their high prices too. So what about getting most of those thrills at a more acceptable price? That sounds like a great idea. Though at around $340, the ASUS Prime X670E Pro Wi-Fi is not a cheap motherboard, but in terms of how many features you get for your investment, well, it's packing some serious heat. But before we get into that, here's a quick word from this video sponsor. I'm glad we uh, finally have the chance to do this. You look so beautiful tonight with your compact MATX design. They say it's not about size, but how you use it. Thankfully, you have optimal cooling capabilities because you are hot. And with your tempered glass side panel, everyone will be able to see exactly how beautiful you are inside and out. How's your food? You wanna try some of mine? You mucky pup. The Chief Tech BX10B. Click the link in the description to find out more. So let me say straight off the bat, this is a great looking motherboard, which is definitely a benefit, but it's the hardware that I'm really interested in. So you get a competent 14 plus two power stage design, large heat sinks, and their combination of alloy chokes and durable capacitors for improved overclocking and stability. You also find PCI Express 5.0, USB 3.2 Gen 2x2, Type-C, USB 4, the latest Wi-Fi and LAN standards, and a whole host of features to enhance everything from cooling all the way down to audio. So let's get things kind of kicked off. Let's talk about packaging. The box is simple and looks premium to a degree with a large image of the board showing off that unique silver styling, something we've seen manufacturers steering away from recently. Now beyond that, there's a few of the main features highlighted thanks to the X670E chipset, but not really much else going on. When you get round to the back, it's pretty much everything you'd need to know in terms of specs, features, and some features that maybe you'd actually expect on higher end boards like the nifty PCIe slot Q release button and support for super fast DDR5 memory, along with a pre-mounted IO shield. Now in a world where everyone is going for more of a kind of stealth look, the ASUS Prime X670E Pro Wi-Fi is a very interesting motherboard and kind of another one taking the trend further away from making everything black on black. It features a slightly lighter PCB with a titanium finish to the aluminium heat sinks that surround the CPU socket and cover the various M.2 storage mounts as well. Now it is a bright looking motherboard and while it will pop in a black case, I think it'll actually look pretty slick in a white PC build too. The CPU benefits from a 14 plus two teamed power stage configuration that can deliver 70 amps each, which is more than enough to run any of the latest high-end CPUs at their rated boost clocks. But those wanting to push extreme overclocks will likely still want the more expensive ROG motherboards. Now there are two heat sinks around the CPU to cool the VRMs with the rearmost one also forming part of the shroud for the rear IO. And there's an etched 01 Prime logo, which does add a splash of RGB when the board is powered up as well. The heat sinks are independent and also don't include any heat pipes, something we're, I guess, kind of used to with higher end boards. Now, further down, you will find a set of heat sinks to aid in cooling the chipset around the ASUS logo, which also matches up with the two M.2 heat sinks located below it, and then another M.2 heat sink just below the CPU socket. In total, there are four M.2 slots, of which one is PCIe 3, two are PCIe 4, and one is PCIe 5.0 for the very best speeds and performance. The DDR5 slots aren't fully armoured, but they are reinforced at the ends and in the middle for added durability, so you do get a little bit extra with this board. The PCIe 5.0 X16 slot, however, is fully armoured, ensuring it can handle the significant bulk of modern graphics cards, while the X4 and secondary X16 slot on the board include no armour shielding at all. Again, something we typically expect on more expensive boards. Connectivity is extensive as well with three USB 2 headers, a Thunderbolt USB 4 header, front USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type-C and front USB 3.2 Gen 1 headers, as well as a lot of fan and RGB headers kind of scattered around the board. So really, it has everything you'd need, whether you're an average user, a gamer or even a creator, which I kind of feel like maybe this is aimed towards a little bit more. 
Now, audio comes from the Realtek S1220A codec with an impressive 120 decibel SNR line out and 113 decibel SNR line in. It also features the latest processing with DTSX, Ultra, Crystal Sound 3, and two way AI noise cancellation. So, unless you're using studio grade equipment, the Prime should kind of be all you really need. And then finally, there's a really competent rear I.O. offering up fast networking, plenty of USB 3.0 ports, but also a trilogy of USB 3.2 and Type-C ports, which is pretty impressive considering where this board is placed in the market. And interestingly, there are no USB 2.0 ports at all. There's also a HDMI port and display port for utilizing onboard graphics, along with a BIOS flashback button for those needing to troubleshoot, as well as Wi-Fi 6E antennas. So as I mentioned at the start, it's not a cheap board, but I think it's clear to see why, as you do actually get a lot of features for your money and something that could rival high-end boards from not just a Zeus, but their major competitors too. But there is the big question, how does it perform? Well, with motherboards, the board itself will never lend itself tons of extra performance, but instead we look at if the board aligns with others that utilize the same chipset to make sure it performs within the range that we actually expect. To do this, we put the board onto our test bench with the Ryzen 9 7900X, coupled with 32 gig of Corsair Dominator Platinum 5200 MHz memory. We also use a Seagate Firecuda 530 1TB drive to help alleviate any bottlenecks, along with a Palette RTX 3080 Gamerock OC. To keep our CPU under control, we put an NZXT Kraken Z73 RGB cooler on top of it, and everything is housed inside an NZXT H7 Flow with all side panels installed to simulate kind of real world you know, usage. Something that's extremely important, especially when you're looking at VRM temperatures that we will be looking at very shortly. Also, for complete transparency, we use an NZXT C1000 Gold Power Supply, and all of our tests are performed on Windows 11 Pro 21H2. So yeah, let's jump into some numbers. So starting things off with some synthetics, and we're off to a good start with the cheaper Prime board getting a small edge on the more expensive ROG boards. Though with that being said, we're not looking for faster here per se, but more to kind of flag any unwanted bottlenecks and making sure things align. And that's the case across multiple synthetic tests. Even in the likes of Super Pi, things sit within a range of times that were expected. Then both single core and multi-core Cinebench scores end up right in the middle of where we'd expect. Memory wise, the board sits middle of the road again with no signs of the performance letting up even after a prolonged amount of tests. Then in gaming across four of the hottest titles, we again see competitive performance with two of the titles showing the prime board edging towards the top of our charts with the other two games showing performance somewhat towards the middle. Essentially putting the Prime board exactly where we'd expect it to be, right in the middle of the mix and showing strong competition against other X670 e boards that we've tested. So other than showing that this board is right on the money with no outliers in terms of performance across a spattering of applications and games, and showing that it passed in terms of where we expected it to be, there is something that does offer kind of different results heavily from board to board. And that comes down to boot time. Especially as AM5 based boards, as we know, are, let's say, notorious for the amount of time they actually take to boot into Windows due to memory training being the kind of main precursor here. The Prime did actually give us some pretty impressive results here when compared to other X670E based boards, coming in with a boot time of just 36 seconds, only being beaten by the more expensive Aorus Master from Gigabyte. The other big area where things change, I guess board to board, is with VRM temperatures. And here, being right in the middle is actually a really great result, especially when you look at the caliber of motherboards that this one is rubbing shoulders with, and the fact that all X670E based motherboards actually do extremely well in terms of VRM temperatures, especially when compared to X570 for instance. The idle temperatures are higher due to the smaller mass on the heat sinks, but when it comes to load, it's clearly more than up to the job, peaking at 49 degrees, which is actually one degree better than the equivalent ROG Strix motherboard. Also during our VRM testing, we did take the power consumption figures, which is a touch higher than expected, but with strong performance figures, it does show that the board isn't wasting power unnecessarily and is actually utilizing the power to its advantage. What this means in terms of cost to run a system with this board is that it sits towards the middle of our stack, though the competition from Gigabyte does fare somewhat better in both the US and the UK, which do have wildly different electricity unit costs at the moment. 
So I've got to be honest, the Prime board has impressed me from everything down to the style and design, the performance, and just being an all round great board for the money. It's available from all big name retailers. And while it's not <clears throat> cheap in the grand scheme of things, it does harness the X670E chipset very well, packing all of the latest features, even if only in a limited capacity. For the type of user that I think this is actually aimed at, having a single armored X16 PCIe 5 slot is enough. And the same for the single PCIe 5.m.2 uh, slot, while having other slower yet still powerful slots to aid in secondary storage too. I think Zeus have a lot to be proud of with their latest motherboard, and it does actually fit the system I've always kind of used when purchasing Zeus motherboards in the past. I look at ROG, you know, the ROG Extreme, and I think, I want that. I then tar, you know, start to save up money, realize that I don't want to spend nearly a thousand dollars on a motherboard, and then I go buy a Prime or a Tough Series instead and live happily ever after. It's middle of the road, but you get what you pay for. Now, after doing that for a few generations and seeing the performance here today, I think I'd quite happily beeline right to the Prime X670E Pro Wi-Fi, as it is one of the best performing and one of the most consistent motherboards we've tested. Now, in terms of features, it is ticking all of the right boxes for 99% of PC users and enthusiasts. You get the latest PCIe 5.0 for graphics and storage, as well as DDR5 memory support, so you're going to be able to get the most out of the latest and greatest hardware. Now, while the VRM and heatsink configuration pales in comparison to the Strix series, it's clearly more than enough for a gaming PC build with the CPU able to hit those consistent boost clocks, and there's no bottlenecks in the storage, memory, or graphics performance, resulting in you know, some consistent and extremely competitive benchmarks throughout this whole entire review. Now, I did mention maybe this is aimed at maybe sort of the creator market, and that does show because overall connectivity is awesome as well. With the latest Wi-Fi 6E and 2.5G LAN, plenty of ultra-fast USBs on the rear I.O., and good front panel support, along with fantastic audio hardware too really does just seem to have it all. So to round things off, if you really want a well-made, stylish and unique looking motherboard that can deliver enthusiast grade performance and connectivity at an extremely competitive price, then yeah, I think don't look any further. The ASUS Prime X670E Pro Wi-Fi is a masterclass in how to make a really great motherboard. And like I say, yes, it is expensive, but compared to other X670E based motherboards, it's actually yeah, kind of where you'd expect it to be. And that about wraps things up. Let me know in the comments section below if you agree with me. Are high-end boards just not needed for the majority of users these days when you can get most of that good stuff without spending stupid amounts of money? I think the newer chipsets like X670E give you so much for your money, but even then it could still be overkill, especially with cheaper A620 boards now hitting the market, though I guess they are better suited for lower TDP parts anyway. For now, hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, a like and a sub to the channel would be amazing. And if you love what we do, then consider supporting us over on Patreon, where you'll get access to a ton of cool stuff, including exclusive behind the scenes content, monthly live streams, a super special area on Discord, and much, much more. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you in the next one. See you later, guys. Bye-bye.